everyone, I'm Ashley Cannon Newell for Paper Tray Ink and welcome to Stamp Affair. I am going to be doing a pleated ribbon uh, embellishment tutorial using the notched flower dies. And I have here them die cut from felt. And I'm using the largest one here. And I'm using satin ribbon and a hot glue gun since I'm using felt. I found that that was the easiest adhesive to use, although there are others that you may have in your stash that you can adhere ribbon to felt. This just was easier for me to dry fast and apply. So I'm just taking the ribbon and I'm putting the satin finish side towards the front of the die um, felt part and then the unfinished side is the back part facing me or facing the video and I'm just using my thumb and pleating it over. This technique is really easy to, to do because the actual pleating doesn't have to be perfect. It's creating a ruffled edge around the die cut and it inevitably will create an embellishment in the end. So it takes um, not too long but you just keep continuing to pleat the ribbon into a ruffled type of edge around the entire die cut. And so here it is here, almost finished. I just add a little bit of glue to each pleat. You don't need a lot because it will spread. And you just use your thumbs pretty much to hold it in place until it sets. And with a hot glue gun, it sets pretty fast. And then you use your other thumb, which will be my right thumb, to actually pleat it um, and fold over. It's like a folding technique. And don't worry about how it looks on the back because using this technique, we're using it to embellish a die cut. So it's not going to necessarily be seen from the back. It's going to be seen from this perspective, the front. And as you can see, you get a nice ruffled edge with using the pleated ribbon technique. Okay, here is the smaller, the smallest of the notched flower dies, and I die cut it from Aqua Mist Felt. The first one is from Mel Melonberry Felt, and here I have Vintage Cream Satin Ribbon. Again, um, the unfinished side is facing is facing the camera, and the finished side is facing. Um, the back of that die cut, that felt die cut. And that again allows you, when you turn the embellishment around, to see the finished satin part on the front of it. So since this particular die cut is a little smaller, it's not gonna take as long, and it'll be relatively fast to add that pleated technique around the entire notched flower die cut to get that ruffled effect around the, effect around the edge. Again, just use your thumbs um, your left thumb holds it in place and you use your right index finger and your thumb to pleat it over and add the adhesive, the hot glue, along the way. And this will be my last pleat here. Just to finish it off, I just add some towards the end and then put the ribbon towards the center of the back of the die cut so that it sticks in place and doesn't stick out in front of the embellishment. Okay, so I just take some scissors and I trim the excess off and it's all done. I'm just going to show you how it looks. Now, I'm just going to layer them too and this is how I'm creating my flower embellishment with the ruffled edge. I'm going to use my hot glue gun again to adhere since it's already heated up. You can use pretty much any fabric adhesive and it works as well. And you just have to be careful when you use a hot glue gun that's not too hot and you remove those extra strings. Okay, so I have here um, a couple of buttons. I double them up and I'm just threading them with some twine. Just a basic thread. Um, going through the uh, both sets of holes and then tying it in a knot. And I'm just going to add some more hot glue to the top and then adhere that button right to the center. 
And this technique is done. Here is your finished pleated ribbon technique to create a ruffled edge floral embellishment using dies. And that's how it looks in the back, but in the front you get a cute ruffled edge around. And what a way to dress up those dies. So to show how I add this to a project, I'm going to go ahead and take some vintage cream cardstock, fine linen ink, and this is one of the background stamps from Background Basics Retro. And I'm just going to stamp it onto the entire front. I like to stamp from the top to the bottom. Sometimes I stamp from bottom to the top, but it just depends on the best way that you can see through um, your acrylic block and the best angle for you. So here's some classic craft ink, and I'm using Think Big Favorites number five, and this is a thank you sentiment. And um, I just turned my cardstock um, to a landscape position because I want to make sure I had an even stamp even though that the card will be portrait that's how I make sure it's even and here is some melon berry gingham pattern paper I'm just going it just had a piece already trimmed I'm just going to adhere it to the top and I'm just going to use a corner rounder to round the corners of the cardstock and I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and stitch around the edge okay now that I have that already stitched I have this is the eyelet border and I already have a die cut from the Simply Jane pattern paper. I'm just going to add some adhesive to a portion of it and adhere it directly onto the dividing line between the pattern paper and that stamp cardstock. It just adds an extra layer of pattern and some design as well with the eyelet design. All right, now that I've trimmed off that off, I have some Simply Chartreuse twill tape and I'm just going to tie it into a bow and then tr trim the ends. Okay, for my next step, I have here some fine lemon um, card stock, and it's cut into an A2 card. It's portrait style, and I'm just adding some adhesive and then going ahead and adhering the card front directly into it. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish it off and round those corners again. This is a quarter inch rounder size that I'm using, and I'm just, just matching it up with the other rounded corners. And here I have Rosie Posey, the leaf die, and I die cut it from the leaves pattern paper from Simply Chartreuse. I'm just going to adhere it right to the front. And the last step I'm going to do is just add my uh, ruffled flower embellishment using that pleated ribbon technique right to the front. And here I'm using some just craft adhesive, and it works perfectly. You can do a lot of things with this particular. Um, embellishment because uh, it's felt and fabric and that means that you can reuse it add it to a headband or something like that there's the finished card to show you another way to use the pleated uh, pleated ribbon technique um, on paper I have here a mega mat stack one die cut from one of the coaster boards and I'm just going to add a uh, aqua mist stripe pattern paper which is cut from the same mega matte stack one die and just matte it right on top and the reason why I do this is so I can have a sturdy embellishment um, you can use just pattern paper if you like but I just thought this way would be easier to pleat the ribbon since I'm going to be handling a little bit more so instead of using hot glue I'm showing you you can use score tape and score tape is a straight line, but you can bend score tape. It may not be completely flat, but that's okay because we don't want to see the back. So I'm just taking little bits of score tape. And this is half inch score tape. Um, and I'm just wrapping it around the corners, making sure I get it around each section. 
and it's okay if it overlaps. You can just peel some of the, um, the backing up and then overlap it on top and you'll continue the actual adhesive going around the entire die cut. Um, another way you could do it is just add strips and then strips of the, court, the score tape and then die cut, uh, make your die cuts, but that would use a little bit more score tape. So using the same technique, again, the satin part facing um, the back pretty much of the die cut, it's going to adhere to the back, um, but you'll see it from the front because you're letting a little bit peek out as you pleat the ribbon. So this lemon tart satin ribbon is really pretty and it pops with that aqua mist, I think. And I'm showing you that you can either, you do the technique with the die cut facing you or the die cut facing, the front of it facing away from you. Um, it just depends on the way that's easier or convenient for you. The cool thing about score tape is if you don't like your pleats, you can, you have time to pull it up and replete again. So you don't have to work as fast as you would with a hot glue gun because it doesn't necessarily set. So here I'm pulling a little bit of it up and repleating to make sure that my pleats um, are adhered correctly and creating that nice ruffled edge that I want. And again, I just want a little bit of it peeking out. I don't want all of the ribbon. So that's what I'm making sure when I'm looking at it from the front. And once I get it down, I flip it over in the back because I can pretty much hold it with my left hand and then pleat with the right. So continue this technique around the entire die cut. And once you get to this little edge here, you just continue the process, making sure that pleat still extends around the edge there and you can see it. So you happen to go a little bit too far down onto the adhesive or too far up, remember with score tape, it's forgiving. It allows you to pull some of the ribbon up and then start again before you set everything. However, it does keep it and maintain it in place. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue my pleating around this corner and just watch TV, have fun with it because it really gives a great result and something unique added to a die cut. And you can use this pleated ribbon technique on just about any die cut. I think it will look great on ovals, um, circles, and lots of other die cuts that Paper Tray Ink also has. So just explore your die cuts and have fun with it by pleating the ribbon to the back of them and adding that ruffled edge. So I'm just going to add a little bit more score tape here as I finish it off because I want to make sure that the end is nice and secure and doesn't pop up. So I'm going to add a couple more pleats. And then trim the excess off with my scissors. Okay, just to show you how I'm finishing this part of the embellishment, I'm stamping directly onto the die cut. I could have done this beforehand as well. Um, all right, I'm just making sure that I got a good impression there. Um, here is the completed pleated ribbon technique showing how you can add a ruffled edge to any die cut embellishment, even pattern paper and coaster board and card stock um, using your die cuts. And here is a photo of my finished card from the first part of the video. And I made ruffled flowers using notch flower dies. And here is an envelope showcasing that last one that I did for the bride and groom. For Paper Tray Ink, I'm Ashley Cannon Newell. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great stamp affair. Bye.
Thank you.